Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm going to make a brief statement, and then I'm going to open it up for some questions, okay? So a lot going on in this building and this franchise for the last several days. And, you know, the way I grew up, the Raiders always stood for diversity. They had the first Latino quarterback, Tom Flores. He also became the second Latino head coach. The first African-American head coach was Art Shell. The first female CEO was Amy Trask. Obviously, all of that was under Al Davis's watch. Now, this week, his son, Mark Davis, I think had a tough time. He had a tough week. He had to gather facts. He had to do his due diligence. And since the day I took this job almost three years ago, what Mr. Davis has preached has been three things. It's been diversity, social justice, and domestic violence. So when we go into drafts, if there's a guy with any a history, with any, any of those type of things, I'm in Mr. Davis's office trying to show him what's going on, whether or not we've done our due diligence on that guy and whether that not that person should be in this building. He's been consistent with his messaging. And in regards to the John Gruden situation, we all respect his decisions, and we're going to move ahead accordingly. As far as the team is concerned, bottom line, we're three and two. It's week six. You know, a lot of these interim head coach deals over the years, it's like week 15, and guys are already packing their bags. That's not the case here. All of our goals are ahead of us. Three and two, one game out of the AFC lead. The focus has got to be on Denver. Rich Bisaccia, interim head coach. Look, I've known this guy for a lot of years, and I hope you get to meet him a little bit and see what a special person he is. Since he's a special teams coach, he's involved with more players on the team than any other coach in our building. He's involved with the offensive guys. He's involved with the defensive guys. Um, the irony is I've endorsed him for a lot of head coaching jobs over the years, both in college and the NFL, back when I had a different job. He's got as much respect in the locker room, in our locker room, as any coach I've ever seen in my life. And the reason he does is, is he a great coach? Hell yeah. But he's an even better man. And what I've always told people when I endorsed him is that he's the most natural leader of men that I have ever been around. Last note, uh, Carl Nassib. He and I spoke yesterday a couple of times, spoke again today. We're going to meet later this afternoon. He requested a personal day today. He just said he's got a lot to process. There's a lot that's been going on the last few days. And, of course, we support that request. So having said all that kind of stuff, guys, um, I'm going to open it up to questions. Uh, I'm not going to get into a whole lot of John Gruden stuff. Um, I'm going to follow the lead of our owner. But fire away. Mike, how does the locker room respond to all of this? And what's the key to them moving forward? Obviously, they're human beings. They yep. have you know, yep. emotions about this. I'm sure. How did they get back together on it and get ready for this game this weekend? We had a team meeting this morning, and uh, the owner went first uh, and kind of gave an overview, the timeline, the events. Um, I went next and talked a little bit about some of the resources we have in place to try and help players if they have anything they need or ha need help with. And then Coach Basachi got up and talked a little bit about who he is as, as a per person, as a coach, um, and kind of redirected all the focus back to football at that point in Denver. Um, here's what I think. I think we have an intelligent locker room. I think over the last three years, we've done a pretty good job of bringing in the right kind of people. Um, I've touched base with as many of the guys as I could over the last several days. Um, we talked with the players. Uh, the captains spoke up at the team meeting to a certain extent, uh, and boy, were they eloquent. Um, the, the common denominator from the players has been focus and professionalism, and that's what I've gotten back from them. I've, is we, we've worked too hard. We've put too much into this. We believe in Rich, and, and we're going forward. We're moving forward. Um, 
we respect, obviously, their rights and abilities to, to comment on the situation in any way they want. And I think they're, they're intelligent enough young men that they'll do that. So uh, the bottom line, though, I believe is the focus is back on Denver. And I think the fact that we're three and two, and, and I think the fact that we got a young team that believes in themselves, feels like they've worked their tails off, and they want to finish this thing out the right way. So, um, just some clarity. I know you don't want to talk too much about John, but were you kept in a loop when these emails were sent to you by the league on Friday? And at any point, was there any discussion of John stepping down before coaching that game Sunday? Look, I, I think the reality of that is that Mark Davis really is the one that was dealing with that. Okay, and I think he felt like, and I don't want to speak for Mark. But there was an awful lot of due diligence that had to go on on his side of this, okay? All I knew that is a bombshell had dropped. Uh, the players talked about it. We talked about it with the players. John dealt with it. And then, of course, I didn't even know where, you know, again, Mark was dealing with all the email stuff. Uh, we were trying to prepare for a football game. Um, and then when we came out of the game and – the rest of it came out. I think Mark was already in the middle of his due diligence. I mean, I don't think – I think he was trying to figure it all out. And, again, I, I know what the guy stands for, and I think he was trying to do the right thing. Do you think, based on the, the timelines of things coming out, the way things came out, um, that there was pressure being put on the Raiders to act uh, you know, quicker? You know, you, you know what? I, again, I, I think uh, Mr. Davis dealt with that, and I think he wanted to be fair to John Gruden. And he wanted to be fair to the Raiders organization. And, and he knew ultimately he was going to have to make a decision. But I'm not getting into timelines. And you're going to have to talk to Mr. Davis for any, any more detail. Mike, what John said, since there's a vacuum of leadership, I'm curious, has Mark let you know now you're driving the ship forward? Obviously, I'm assuming the code, new coach would come at the end of the year. Is that a search you're going to be leading? With the power vacuum, what is your, obviously, the, you have the title. What are you doing as the – are you the football guy now? I, I don't see a vacuum of leadership, okay? Uh, and I want to be really clear about that. Rich Bisaccia is the best leader I've ever been around, okay? Uh, the players respect and love Rich Bisaccia. So from that perspective, he and I are all in together on this, 100%, okay? We're three and two. And so any kind of conversation about what we're going to do after the season to me is premature. You're going to let this season play out. We're going to see what happens. And I'm going to back this son of a gun unequivocally. Mike, you have a very special relationship with John. Is it, is it disappointing? Is it sadness? I mean, you have to have some emotion towards what happened with a friend of yours. Yeah, I do, I do have emotion. And, and, I, and I am sad. And to be honest with you, I'm sad for the whole Gruden family. Okay, not just John. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're all accountable for our actions, and that's how we have to look at it. Mike, I talked to, uh, to Mark Davis a little bit ago, and he said that basically the roles have flipped now, that you as general manager, you have 51%. You have final say on personnel decisions. With that in mind, what is your vision for this roster going forward? Like you said, you're 3-2, and two, everything's still ahead of you. What is your vision for how this thing should go forward? I, I think it's a really subtle distinction, and and. He can talk 51 and 49, and, and I can tell you from my heart that the way I've always looked at the general manager's job, regardless of 51, 49, final say, all that, all that verbiage, it's my job and my department's job to service the coaching staff, to find them players they want. And trust me, nothing's going to change there, okay? Nothing will change there. It's my job and our job in that department to supply the coach. Like this morning, I was down in the, in the defensive back coach's office. Hey, there's a particular player available. I think he fits. What do you think? What's your background with him? And that, that was the exact same conversation that would have taken place a week ago, and it will continue to take place. Rich and I are on the same page. Trust me. Um, I, I don't think you're going to see – um, you know, I can't even go beyond the daily right now. We're going to get into free agency. We're going to get into the draft and all those things down the road. But right now, that's a very subtle conversation, and it's going to be business as usual. Mike, 
I know you can't get in the head of the 53 players or so that are in that locker room, but based on what you saw, what you heard, um, where do you feel they are mentally moving forward with all this? It's, I think, very much like I said before. Now, let, let's be honest. You know, if I ask uh, a player a question, are they going to be 100% honest with me? I, I think I have a pretty good relationship with most of them. I think they know I'm pretty transparent. You know, I, I, I'm pretty straightforward. I, my wife says to me, I'm too straightforward sometimes. That's just who I am, okay? Um, but every player that I've talked to, the reaction has been, look, we're all in. We've been all in. And, okay, Coach Gruden's gone. And what, we said, what I said to the players this morning is that there, there's a um, spectrum of opinions out there about John Gruden from total condemnation to full empathy, okay, and everything in between, okay? And, and what I said to the players basically is that you're entitled to your position. You're entitled to your opinion on that. But ultimately what we've preached since the day I've been here with, with Coach Gruden and just about every other team in the world preaches is the team's got to come first at some point. You know, after family and, um, and, and your religion, and teams got to come in there, okay? And I think that's what the, all the guys are saying. We're professionals. We have a job to do. We're all in. Coach, again, there's a gamut of emotions in the room about how they feel, and each of them is entitled to that emotion. But I really do believe that going forward, what you're going to see is a team that's three and twos and saying we got to go play Denver, and all every single one of our goals is still out there. Do you believe Sunday's performance was impacted by everything that was going on? I don't. Mike, you mentioned about Carl and that he came to you. Yeah. And that's understandable, and, and, um, and I respect that. But this all started with a racist remark about a black man. Yep. Was there, did you address the black players? Did anyone, any, any of the, the black players from this roster come and express that they may need some time? Or was there, because this is how it started. It, it, it domino affected with misogynistic and homophobic remarks. But there's also a population of that locker room that may have been affected mentally or that needed time to process as well. Yeah, and uh, I've talked to several of the black players, okay? I think we've reached out to a bunch of players, black and white. Um, everybody's got emotions and feelings. I've talked to some of the people in my department that are black and, and my, my, I, my director of pro scouting. And I just said, DJ, I can't put myself in your shoes. Help me. Okay? So uh, we've spent a pretty good amount of time trying to, trying to help these guys and talk with these guys. Not talk out at them, but with them. Um, and the other thing I would say is just uh, for Carl, it, it, let's be honest. He's a community of one that's openly gay. Okay? Um, we do have a large community of African-American players, and, and we're, I'm trying to do, we're trying to do everything we can for that community as well, obviously. It started there. Okay, nobody's forgetting that. We're and, and I'm trying to, do, to work with everyone, and we're going to continue to do that. Let's do two more, guys. John? Week six adversity is common for NFL teams, but this is pretty unprecedented as you try to navigate your plan, I mean, how much questioning within, like, are we doing the right things? <laughs> uh, interesting question. I mean, I, I probably have had texts or phone calls from at least half the GMs in the league, and the in intriguing thing is what their advice has been is trust your gut, do the right thing, I know you will. Uh, I think that's great advice. <laughs> it's, Kind of what my dad told me. Uh, not, not, not about this. I'm talking about it, the job in general. Um, so it's week six, and really what we need to do, and I, I hate to make this sound brusque in any way, but I know the human interest element here. I understand all the concerns from all the different constituencies. I get it. But at the end of the day, our jobs are to win football games, and we got to get our focus back there. And that might sound cold, and it might sound calculating. But at the end of the day, that's our job. And I think what's cool about our players is they're able to compartmentalize a little bit. And I think most of them are saying, hey, we're all in. We got a big frigging game this weekend, and we got to go win it. Anything more, guys? Real quick, Mike, just 
I know with John being gone, it seems like the chapter, this whole chapter with the league and all this stuff is done. Have you guys been assured by the league that there's no more stuff coming down the pike that, that's going to be disruptive here? I haven't had an opportunity to even talk to the league. I don't know. There were 700,000 plus or minus emails. You know, I, you can ask a lot of questions about why these got out or didn't get out. And I can't go there. And, and really, uh, at the end of the day, Steve, all I can do is control what I can control. And, and that is trying to help this team win games. And I'm not trying to get away from your question. Um, I can't speculate about what can come down the pipe. All we can do is deal with what we have today. Okay, thank you, everyone. I appreciate you guys. Thank you.